الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله ذي العزة والفض والكرم حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما أما بعد يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أيها بالليل فير الله as he should be feared and die not except on a state of Islam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful grant us this great gift to die on a state of Islam. Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. Amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra, in more specific, قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةِ عَجَلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومَ مَدْحُورًا Whoever who's seeking the life of this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the ajila he called it the hasty one the one perishable the one who comes that can mirage and it goes away the one that you see it now so beautiful and then is going to disappear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will give to whom he will among those who dreaming of this life not all of them because some group they will be given, the other group they will be dreaming. And that dreaming that the intention, ill intention, they have to do the same mischief if they had the money or whatever those people wishing to have, like those other people, they will be in the same in the wrath of Allah. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he's going to be in the doom of the hellfire. Then he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا and whoever who want al-akhirah, arad al-akhirah, the hereafter. Wahuwa mu'minin, wahuwa mu'minun, and he's a believer. Wa sa'alaha sa'yaha. Sa'alaha sa'yaha, he worked and acted based on this intention of seeking the hereafter. Fa'ulaika kana sa'yuhum mashkura. Those, their sa'y, their action, their journey in this life, not only will be accepted, but be rewarded and thanked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The difference between these two categories of people, the first category that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala yuridu, and the other one qala arada. Yuridu is in the present time or present tense, or also makes someone to be, uh, re really give us like, the translation or the understanding that someone is in constant seeking the hereafter. And the other one, Qala Arada, is settled. Is only one thing that he is looking for. Settled for it, he has an objective, defined objective by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other one, Qala Yuridu, Yuridu is like, today there is a desire, tomorrow there is another one. Today it has a, you know, new fashion. The other, tomorrow is gonna have a new actor, a new showbiz, a new thing. Yuridu al so he's really subhanallah someone he's he's confused because that dunya he's really running he's running to make a successful business the other one he's running to get a greater degree and everyone is working of course if it's halal may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone who do such a thing in halal but is not the the thing that when someone qala yuridu al without even have the intention to have the akhirah which is the akhirah what he was created for now, this is here what we talk al iradatu. Al iradatu is this will, is this want, is the determination to achieve, to, to be motivated, to get what you're looking for, what you're wishing to have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to these two groups, but we want to be in the group of the believers to see what this type of determination al iradatu. If we look at the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we study more in the hadith of the Prophet, we find that this irada has levels. 
when you want something, it has levels. But we can't put it in these two levels or two categories or have two elements. The first one is the irada, that an intention. You want something. You chose it. But the intention is like a choice and it stops there. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala man arada who want. And he's a believer, and he will act upon this his wish, his act upon his want, based on the sincerity that he has. So we have an intention, and we have an action. Therefore, the irada, the second type of the irada, is, is irada that make the person to be an engine of action. So the engine or the action, this irada, turn this person to be an engine of good action. So we have a, really a journey between the intention and the implementation of the action. Between them is there's an irada that is a, a simple intention and the other one an irada that is really putting the action. And you have a motivation. You have something, willingness, determination to do. So the believer, subhanAllah, he finds himself between two forces. Two forces. The intention that he loves Jannah. The intention that he has sincere love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about the action? What about the action? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the bab, the gate of the tawbah, grant you the opportunity to be repented, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make easy for you the path to forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make easy for you the path to paradise. If we have that determination, how much this determination or how big this determination that we need to have is as simple as you looking forward to have a family. How long it takes you time to find your better half. How time you spend to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you children. How much time you put to have a successful business. How much years you study to be a doctor or engineer or to have a degree to have a good job. How much hour you put to help yourself get, you know, higher position at your work. This is determination. This is everyone has it. If you just copy it, just copy and paste it for the akhirah, you'll find yourself from the people of, of paradise. That's the determination. So once someone, subhanAllah, saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you, as easy as you're looking forward to build a family, as easy as you're looking forward to have a successful business. If you put that intention, that focus, that work, that study, that you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you easily because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and he will not only give you, he will thank you for it. Because you work, you work, you work. And then, of course, in the halal and seeking someone, the means of halal, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give barakah and shower his blessing. Everyone among us and from among the believers, who those who seek in the halal, put your time in business. But we saying when we come to the akhirah, what type of irada do you have? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah, he gave us an example. And he defined for us these two forces. A force which is pulling you toward the attraction of this worldly life and a force who moving you forward to the pleasure of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in a beautiful ayah, قَالَ يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَلُوا مَا لَكُمْ يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَلُوا مَا لَكُمْ إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ مُنْفِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِثَّا قَلْتُمْ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ What happened to you? What matter with you when it's been told you, you're being commanded to march forth in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're being cling heavily to the earth. You're being inclined heavily to the earth. Look at the question from Allah asking us, are you pleased with the enjoyment of this life rather than the hereafter? And you say, no, ya Allah, I love the akhirah. No, ya Allah, I know this is, the eternity is, is, is with you, ya Allah. So ask yourself, so where is your determination? Because in these two forces, subhanAllah, there's this sira, there's this conflict, there's this struggle. Because the shaitan, he wants to always to make you forget, to see how beautiful all these things. But the determination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's encouraged us, inspired us, commanded us to have. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in the example of Surah Tawbah, which subhanAllah, those who lose this determination, this irada, they become behaving like the hypocrite. We're not saying these people are hypocrites, but behaving like the hypocrite that Allah subhanahu wa described in the Quran. When you have this determination, 
when you have this strong power, because the power of the believer, in, not in his appearance, the power of the believer, not in his money, the power of the believer, not in the power that he has, or the position, or the business he has, the power of the believer in his heart. قلب صامد وإيمان ثابت. What the meaning this determination, this irada, this irada that help you to cross all the trial, to face all the all the difficulties, to have a tranquility in the time of distress, to have a joy in the time of real difficulties. That's is the irada who help you. Why? When you have this irada, therefore you'll understand the meaning of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's telling us, when you have such an irada, that irada becomes like a dynamo, giving you like subhanallah, generator, generator of what? Of patience. That's why Luqman, alayhi salam, said to his son, Ya Bunay, aqim salata the backbone of standing, of having the structure of faith in the prayer. Qala wa'mur bil ma'roof, yuanha al-mukir, enjoy good and forbid evil, which is the path for someone to be on the uprightness. And he said, qala wasbir ala ma asabak, have patience on whatever it been inflicted on you. Dhalika man azmal, inna dhalika man azmal war, that's the most determined way of have the strong determination and willingness to travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us many examples, I will take some of them that we've been studying in tafsir of and we have the army of Talut that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent when they ask their prophet to send them a king. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the example, amazing example. You have a whole army, more than 70,000, and they're all ready to go battle and have to strive in the sake of Allah to bring back, to free the land that they, they belong to them. But here, the test of the irada, how determined you are, how willingness you have, how brave you are and truly sincere to Allah to do such a great thing for your community, for your land, for your children, for your next generation by doing goodness, how much you have this strong determination. That's the test. It's not the sincerity of the intention. Everyone has a good intention, but between the intention and the implementation, there's a journey and this journey happen inside ourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us an example that we live all every day. Everyone has a good intention to go and bring back the land that they belong to them. And subhanAllah, their king, he told them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you a test. Whoever who drink from this river, he will not come with me. And it's a big test. And that's how subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there's these forces. It's not about drinking about the river. It's not because people are thirsty. Like the thirst of the dunya make them to jump into the river. The fear to not face this difficulty and fulfill the trust that they have and run away, that is the drinking of the river. Allah gave them some small thing. They were not going to die because they're not going to drink because they're going to drink later. But that particular river, the test is in it. And subhanAllah, the strong determination, when you have the strong determination, you believe in Allah. And you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And you have the certainty that's what is good for you. You have the certainty that is your purpose of life. So how you retract back? How you've been inclined to the earth? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, when he gave us the example in Surah Tawbah of the believer, the believer, the pre people who have the strong determination, the strong will, they will not come ask you to help. They will not ask you the permission so they can help in the sake of Allah. They will do it without asking. They will put the donation without you knowing. They will be helping beside or beside, behind the scenes without you knowing. Why? Because they were doing it for Allah. لا يستأذنك الذين يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر أن يجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم. Those who truly believe in Allah and the hereafter, they will not ask you the permission to go strive in the sake of Allah. They will not. With their belonging, with their life, with everything. And Allah knows are the true believers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال إنما يستأذنك الذين لا يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر وارتبت قلوبهم فهم في رابهم يترددوا Who gonna ask you the permission? Those who don't really believe in Allah They don't really believe They have the intention They have the sincerity Yes, it might be there But they're not sure It's not in their planning That they're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال وارتبت قلوبهم They have confusion They have doubt in their hearts and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the verb that we are talking about, al-iradatu, from the verb arada. Al-iradatu is the willingness 
to want. Arada is to have that action, to want it and to go forward, to achieve it. قَالَ وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجَ لَأَعَدُّ لَهُ عُدَّةً and if uh, truly they uh, were sincere to go out in this expedition of Tabuk with the Prophet Sallallahu they will have a, have a prepared because the believer when they heard about the expedition they're already ready waiting for the order of the Prophet Sallallahu to go with him but the other people who are hypocrites because they do not have the determination because they have intention but they do not have action because they have intention but they do have don't have truly Iman so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is amazingly, if you underline this part of the ayah, قَالَ وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ إِنْ بِعَاثَهُمْ فَثَبَّطَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ I want you to reflect with me in this ayah. قَالَ بَتَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى He hold them down. ثَبَّطَهُمْ And he tell them, he told them to stay with those who are going to sit back. Heal the punishment. Wallahi, many of us, they do action. For example, they don't even come to the salah. They don't even come. Why? Because they are busy. They don't even open a book of Quran at all. Why? Because they are busy. You're not busy. You're being punished. You're being punished. These people, Allah didn't call, وَلَكِنْ كَرِيهَ Allah. Allah hates for them to be with the Prophet. They will not have an opportunity to have an opportunity to find the pleasure of Allah because they didn't have the determination turn it into hypocrisy. You stay back. While in the other ayah, they came to the Prophet. They came to the Prophet. وَإِذَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَجَاهِدُوا مَعَ رَسُولِهِ اسْتَعْذَنَكَ أُولُ الطَّوْلِ مِنْهُمْ وَقَالُوا ذَرْنَا نَكُمْ مَعَ الْقَائِدِينَ Those who do not have excuse, those who have wealth, those who have money, they came to you, Ya Rasulullah, and they ask you the permission to stay. And actually, that the permission to ask to stay is a punishment as Allah add an increased perversity in their heart because Allah refused for them to be with his Prophet. So don't be saying like someone he's busy, cannot come to the masjid. He has so busy, has businesses and everything. Said yeah, he coming to the masjid is where the rahmah of Allah. Coming to the masjid is where the bounty of Allah. Coming to the masjid where is the light of Allah. Therefore, if you don't come, you might be punished by Allah. He's not blaming, but for us to reflect, and this is from the Quran. For us to reflect, and this is from the Quran. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave the example of the other people. He said, those, there is no objection for them because they don't come. The blind one and the one who's limp and the one who doesn't have money. وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ مَا أَتَوْكَ لِتَحْمِلَهُمْ قُلْتَ لَا أَجِدُ مَا أَحْمِلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ تَوَلَّوْا وَأَعْيُنُهُمْ طَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمَةِ and no objection of those who came begging you, Ya Rasulullah, to find anything to take them with them. They said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I don't have anything to take you with me. They left and their eyes are flooding with tears. That's the determination. That's the determination. That's the strong will. When every one of us has it, they teach it how to be motivated. They teach it in those seven secrets of the keys of happiness or success. They teach it. If you just copy it and paste it and pour it toward what pleases Allah. Wallah is as easy as building a family to go to the Rahmah of Allah. It's as easy as building a business to go to the Rahmah of Allah. It's as easy as get the grades people they put, as I said, 30 years. It's as easy as that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an example, and we have beautiful example. It's the example of one young man who had this strong determination, who had this strong irada. He was an orphan living with his uncle. If we try, please, the children to take them out in the other room. Jazakumullah khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this beautiful example. The example of an orphan. He was living with his uncle. But seeing the companion of one Allah ta'ala alayhim traveling to the Medina, he accepted Islam. And his Ankle, he's not a Muslim. He was waiting, waiting, waiting. And then he came to his ankle. He told him, I accepted Islam. I believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told him, you dare do such a thing. I will expel you from my home. And I take everything you have. He told him, 
do whatever you want to do. He took everything he has, even the clothes that he has on his back. He get everything from him. He had, subhanAllah, found a piece of cloth, harsh, rough, that they used to make bags to put like store food. He cut them in two and he covered his aura. Put one on his back, on his shoulder, and the other one as an izar. And he traveled to the Prophet ﷺ in that state. Determination, willingness, true love, genuine love. I mean, the uncle, he told him, I'll give you everything if you stay. What everything is means for him when he's going to meet the Prophet? What this dunya means when you're going to stand before Allah? He came to the Prophet and he was waiting in the masjid. When he saw the Prophet ﷺ, he started to cry. He could not hold himself. The guide, the beauty of the servitude, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He led them to the prayer for the Fajr and the Prophet ﷺ told him, he told him, who are you? He said, Qala Abdullah ibn al-Uzza. My name is Abdullah. And Nasab to al-Uzza. Al-Uzza is an idol. Qala bal anta Abdullah. And the companion, they called them Dhul Bijadayn. Al-Bijadu is this rough cloth. And when he cut it in two, becomes two pieces. They call it Dhul Bijadayn. Abdullah, Dhul Bijadayn. And he started to be known among the companion of this young man with a strong determination who left everything for the sake of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he told us, قَالَ وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةِ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنُ Whoever who's seeking the akhirah and he acts upon his sincerity, upon what is really required to get to the hereafter. قَالَ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنُ الْأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعِيهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to reward them, accept them, appreciate their action, and grant them his mercy and his pleasure. Now the question here, when Allah talked about the dunya, he said, you might have it, you might not. Because you, someone can be a dreamer to the end of his life. There he died intoxicated, dreaming to be a trillionaire. The other one, Allah guaranteed for him. So it's a law, it's a defined, it's a sacred law. Sunnatun ilahiyya. If you go to the akhirah, Allah will grant it to you. Then Abdullah ibn Bijadin had this strong will, this strong irada. And he left with the Prophet ﷺ in Ghazwati Tabuk that I was mentioning in Surah Tawbah, in the expedition of Tabuk. An expedition of Tabuk, a very, very rush, a very harsh expedition. It was so hot, and they were traveling the desert, and no battle happened, no battle happened. They didn't find the army, they didn't meet the army. It was a test for the whole believer. It was a test for us to reflect on it. They didn't fight. But there's people, they died. And whoever died when he went there, he going to die as a shaheed because he had the sincerity, the intention, the willingness, the determination, and he put his path and he walked toward the pleasure of Allah. And he died, Allah will grant him his pleasure. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he's seeing a light from a distance. He came, he found two men, Abu Bakr wa Umar, the two shuyukh, a shaykhan. They are digging a grave. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi watching them, and there's one laying down dead, covered in his coffin. And after they dig the grave, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi get inside the grave. And he said, Have me, hand me clothes or give me clothes your brother. And he poured in the lahat, and he made dua, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Said, Ya Allah, I am pleased with him. Be pleased with him. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he, was, he said, I wish I was that man inside the grave. His grave being digged by two of the greatest companions. And being lahad or uluhida from the Prophet sallallahu And then he said, who is ya Rasulullah? Qala Abdullah, dhul bishadayn. This young man who had the strong will, the determination, to travel and put the dunya behind him. Because this adornment of the dunya is going to perish. It's going to vanish. We read it every week for those who read Surah Al-Kahf. All this earth is going to turn, subhanAllah, like bare. No vegetation, no trees. 
It's all the adornment, subhanAllah. And this is, in this situation, we say, how much determination you have to go to paradise. How strong your will is. Will you have it as the love that you have for your business? As the love that you have for your children? As the love that you have for your family? Is not this determination is going to help you to love more your children, to love more your family, to have more blessing in your, in, in your business, to have more blessing in your study? Is this determination who going to be a generator of goodness, a generator of patience, of values, of greatness? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولَى الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Have patience of those great of the Prophet before you. Nuh, wa Ibrahim, wa Musa, wa Isa alayhimu salam ajma'in. And someone will ask the question, what is the substance that we need to build this determination? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beautify our heart with this strong will and with this determination and the second khutbah I'll share with you the substance I will say this and I will forgive Allah and I will forgive you and I will forgive you and I will forgive you In the name of Allah and the peace and the peace and the salam on the Prophet and Mustafa and the rest The strong determination to travel toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need two elements The first element is that you be certain that you're going to meet Allah are you going to meet Allah? You're going to say yes. Did you just imagine standing before Allah? Those who pass the test of the river in the story of Talut, after they pass, how are they going to face Jalut, this big giant army with heavy weapons? How? When they are a very small group. What they said, those believers, those rooted with strong determination with the power that they have in their heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, قَالَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He didn't say, the believer they said, قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ اللَّهِ Those who believe certainly they're going to meet Allah, they said, how many small group they defeated a big group by the will of Allah. That's the determination. The first thing, do you truly believe that you're going to stand before Allah? Wallahi, if you make it every day, think about it, your heart will be like as big as this world. The second element, because we don't have time, that you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the authority on all the matters. He has the authority on his decrees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to accomplish everything he told you in the Quran. Allah gave us the example of a small boy, Yusuf alayhi salam, just being bought from the street, from the market as a slave. And he is a slave in the house of Al-Aziz. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is how we establish Yusuf in the earth. This is how we empowered Yusuf. You ask a question, he's a boy, how is being established? What are you going to do? When you ask this question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer you right there. Qala, wallahu ghalibun ala amr. What happened to you? Allah has authority on all his affairs. He going to finish it, but most of the people do not know. That's why when you come to the end of the ayah of the surah, you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Believe that you're going to meet Allah. And believe certainly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has authority on his decrees, has authority in on his plans subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what will bring in your heart power and determination and make you to really run and race for the way of Allah. And we are today. In the beginning of the season of blessing, we start at Shaban. This is the second day. And in Ramadan, in four weeks, and it is time to build that power in the heart. We call it irada. To build that firmness of the iman. To build the standing and strength for the sake of Allah. It is time to take a shower. 
not to get off the impurity of the Janaba, to get off the impurity of heedlessness, to break the chains that pulling down us to the earth with all desires, and to try to cleanse our hearts from this image of the dunya. We have printed in our heart a lot of wants, a lot of images. How can we travel to Allah and we have all these images in our heart? How can we travel to Allah when we are really imprison ourselves, chain ourselves with the desires? How can we have eliminated hearts when we are still heedless? That's why we don't have irada, because we don't remind ourselves that we're going to stand before Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a reminder for myself and for my dear brother, respected sister, for this blessing month to start to also do the fasting because this is the, for the month that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fasted, he fasted sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most in this month after Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the blessing, cleanse our heart and purify our soul and give us this willingness and determination and irada in doing and racing for the forgiveness and racing for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ma'atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina a'adhab al-nar. Allah ma'arina al-haqq haqqan wa arzuqna tiba'a wa arina al-batila batila wa wafiqna lijitinaba. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا أجمعين ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم دقها وشقها صغيرها وكبيرها اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور أبصارنا وذهاب غمومنا وجلاء أحزاننا وقائدنا وسالكنا إلى جناتك جنات النعيم اللهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله